Morgan Stanley just said, In our opinion, the first shot in the war on ice has yet to be fired. We believe the decline in ice still remains an underappreciated risk that is being masked by the strong cyclical backdrop currently. First shot yet to be fired? Let me see about that. In 2017, internal combustion engine sales officially peaked three, four years ago, and they are down many, many millions since. Factories are being closed or worse, reconfigured into EV production centers. Engine programs are being canned, finished, cut at a loss of billions and billions of dollars. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicle programs are being cut at losses in the tens of billions. Germany is at 25% EV sales. Norway at well over 60. EVs already top the sales charts in a number of categories. EV sales in 2020 increased by 200%. They're on pace to potentially triple in 2021. The first shot was fired a long time ago, Morgan Stanley. Hi guys, and welcome to the channel. Great to see you. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so, so that you get notifications in your feed for future videos we're making. I've got a really good one on the likelihood of Kia going bankrupt. Make sure you check that out. In fact, it's so incredible what Kia plans to do that you won't believe what they're planning. It's a plan to fail. Anyway, guys, if you've already subscribed and you're back again, great to see you. Now, car makers devoted to manufacturing internal combustion engine vehicles could soon be worth nothing or even be a negative asset thanks to the rise of EVs. That comes from Morgan Stanley, not from me. Now, Morgan Stanley are, to be honest, very conservative when it comes to their EV projections. They're almost always under, under predicting the increase of EV sales. So if you know they're going to get something wrong, it's that. Now, analysts at Morgan Stanley say the current boom in car sales, which has sent the share price of many automakers like GM and Ford to multi-year highs in recent months. Make sure you check out my video on Ford potentially going bankrupt in 2030 as well, is blinding some investors and businesses to the medium-term trend towards electrification. When I <laughs> Medium-term, why have they even used that word? It's just ridiculous. Customers want EVs now, even though they cost more than petrol cars. By 2025, it is a 100% certainty EVs will be cheaper than petrol. Can you imagine the demand when an EV is actually cheaper than a petrol or diesel gas vehicle? By 2025, Kia plans to have 75% of their global car fleet internal combustion engines in 2030. Incredible. Anyway, analysts at Morgan Stanley say the current boom in car sales which has sent the share prices of major automakers like GM and Ford to multi-year highs in recent months, is blinding investors. This problem extends beyond car makers and includes dealers and suppliers in ICE vehicles and parts. Morgan Stanley argues that investors have become too optimistic about the future for these businesses. I 100% agree with that comment. And they say, a substantial portion of the assets, systems, and intellectual property within our industry is dependent on internal combustion engines, the analyst wrote. Our analysts and our analysis suggest the value of the business related to ICE will be worth zero, if not negative. Let me repeat, this is what Morgan Stanley said. Our analysis suggests the value of businesses related to ICE will be worth near zero, if not negative. Very carefully consider who you are investing in. If you're investing in a company like SK Innovation, sounds great. Wow, battery manufacturer, yep, EVs are really important. Sure, absolutely. Complete market disruption will be over by 2030. SK Innovation appear to be playing a big part in that, aside from their having to pay LG Chem $2 billion. But let's forget about that. Doesn't matter. You invest in SK Innovation without realizing you're investing in an oil company an oil company. Yep, 80% of their business is in the oil business. Be very careful about who you are investing in right now. Stanley went, Morgan Stanley went on. They said, because auto companies are currently enjoying strong demand versus supply for their products, today, in today's historically strong market, investors tend to push off their, con 
their concern over ICE liability entanglement further out into their analysis. Now, the move to EVs is gathering huge pace. According to Bloomberg NEF, if governments snap into action, it could soon start moving at breakneck speed as it must as we are taught as if we are to avoid catastrophic climate change. This will leave car makers that have invested only in ice production or mostly in ice production with expensive plants that makes products that nobody wants. Guys, when I said 2025, well, most people are predicting that by 2023, ice vehicles will be on in parity in price to EVs. Now remember, remember, China is coming on strong, whether you like it or not. Most people don't like China right now. Understandable. Doesn't matter how your, what your feelings are. Doesn't matter if your little, heal, your little feelings got hurt. It doesn't matter. That doesn't change facts. Facts are China is coming. Whether that be through batteries, through platforms, through cars, through, through parts, they are coming in a range of ways. They have over 400 automotive companies in the EV sector. And all of those, every single one, is heavily subsidized. Heavily subsidized. China wants to take over this market and they're coming, whether you like it or not, by 2023, battery electric vehicles will be on parity in price with ice. Now, the situation, Morgan Stanley say, is similar to the stranded assets debate over coal mines and power plants. This is even more problematic for investors. Investors who are invested in coal plants and non-renewable energy plants are going to lose literally billions of dollars. Now, companies that sink capital and intellectual property into the development of these mines and plants assume a certain return on that investment over many years. But the rapid switch to low-carbon alternatives is posing major risks that they will not be able to make back their investments. It's not just risk, guys. It's an absolute certainty. It's currently cheaper to install a new solar plant and continue running a coal plant in every country in the world right now that has even half of the, half of the year is sunny. Just half. I mean, a cost for per kilowatt hour right now for coal is six cents. For solar, it's two cents. The same thing will happen in EVs by 2030 when it will be substantially cheaper to produce an EV than it will to produce an ICE vehicle. In addition to that, remember, ICE vehicles need way more servicing. They won't last anywhere near as long. Current batteries on the market right now can do a million kilometers in range. Batteries by 2030 will easily do a million miles in range, right? And you'd have to be a, an insane person to buy an ICE vehicle in 2030 when it's more expensive than an EV, which will last three times longer, three, three times longer, and won't require expensive servicing and will be far cheaper to run because energy costs will continue to decline constantly, in fact, rapidly over the next decade. Now, Australian energy giant AGL in particular, which spent huge sums of money on coal-fired power plants just a decade ago, is now facing enormous consequences of the rapid rollout of cheap solar here in Australia, which has pushed power prices to unsustainable levels. Guys, could the same thing happen to car makers? You bet it could. You bet it will. Morgan Stanley analysts say they are swimming against the mainstream current on this, which is bullish about the near-term earnings of potential and potential of ICE automakers. Well, you do the math and tell me what you think in the comments below, guys. I'm fascinated to hear what you think about what's going on. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.